to. What about if you're working with something that is, is sort of more 3D? How does the zoom work with that? Will anything be blurred or does it, can you manually use it? You can actually have, you have a manual override. So one of the buttons you've got on here and on the remote is one called near and far. So if I'm wanting to uh, focus on what's there and then I put my finger here, what will happen is I can focus on what's nearest and then what's furthest away oh. by pressing near and far on there and you can see it just refocuses itself on what's nearest or furthest away so there is a kind of manual override using the buttons there if you've got a large three-dimensional item now we've talked about the subject matter that mm -hmm. this can be used for what about ages uh, is it any any specific age group it's good for the whole curriculum no i think it goes across the whole curriculum right from nursery right up to university level and traditionally in nursery we have show and tell activities when children might bring things in and we place them underneath and they can talk about it to promote speaking and listening uh, right through up to university level where we've got lecturers who are placing complex diagrams or again students work or artifacts underneath there that they want to talk about and share with the, uh, the, the students that are attending the lecture so it can go across all levels really yeah. What about for children or students who have special needs? Are there any unique features on this uh, that can help them in the education process? Yes, there are. Um, if I placed some text underneath here, I'm going to open this book and place that underneath now. Traditionally, text would be, as we can see on here, black on white. Now, what I can do with this, if I press a button here that says negative on there, what I can actually do is reverse that, and now we have white on Gosh. black. And that is really useful for children who might have a, a sight difficulty. It's much easier for them to read white on black than it is black on white. So I could just, by pressing that negative button there, I can do that. And, of course, I can also zoom in on that text. So I can make the text as big as I want to on there as well, and then just scroll around if I wish to so everybody can see that. I could also record myself doing sign language using this and then play that back by using this as a normal video camera. Now, I've, uh, even though I'm not the, uh, the, the brightest when it comes to buttons, I have spotted lights. Right. What, what facilities do these okay. offer? Okay. Now, if I needed extra lighting on the top here, I can press the button that says lamp and that will light it from above, like so. If I press that again, then the light will come from beneath. Now, a good example of where we might use that is if we're trying to show a negative such as this and we're trying to focus on something like positives and negatives. So I'm going to place a negative image on there now, and then I'm going to zoom that up so that negative actually fills the whole screen, mm -hmm. like so. And you can see with that light behind you get a really good view mm. of that negative. Now if I press the negative button now, you can see that reverses and we get the positive back again. That's, that's amazing. It is, isn't it? So there's the negative. And there is the positive, so I can use it and in that's that way. And that is the, the, the picture as it would Yeah, exactly as it would how, be. how it would be. Yeah, as big as you want it, depending on how big you're projecting to. And if I combine that with the split screen as well, as you can see, it's taken a copy of what's on the left and is projecting it on the right. That's still a live image. Press the but negative button now, and you can see that's the negative ah, and that's the positive. So, so I can great actually for have comparing and contrasting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I can have the two like that very easily, like that. Now then, if you were going to have one side of the screen with just, say, the image, could you actually be working on the other side of the split screen, actually physically doing something or showing something, or do they both have to be static? No, you can be doing a different thing on the other side. So if I zoom back out again on this now and take that light off for a minute, like so, and I'll use the example now of this torch. So maybe I want to explain to you about what goes on inside mm -hmm. a torch. I can actually place the torch on the left-hand side, and you'll see it'll focus itself up. It's always going to automatically focus on there. There we go. And then I'm going to press the split button, so it's going to hold that image for me. And then on the right-hand side is, here... That is a remarkable... What yeah. I'm going to do here, you can watch me do something here. So I, you're actually watching this as a class on the screen as I'm taking this to pieces underneath here and then what I can actually do is zoom you right in on this bulb if I wish to so pressing the zoom in button there we go right in and you can see right inside the bulb there. And that is fantastic like so. because you have it in its original form which makes it easier for students to relate to exactly. when you've taken it apart or yeah. anything like that really they can see the bits that go together that's right to make up yeah Another example of use of that might be if I was uh, doing simple division in, you know, down in Key Stage 1 with the younger children. I would put, say, 20 counters on the left-hand side and then freeze them. And on the right-hand side, I could work here and split those off into groups and divide them up. And it gives those children who are very visual learners that idea of the 20 counters on the left. They can still see those all of the time, even though I'm regrouping them on the right. So it's very useful. Another example might be if I was teaching children about the flowering plant, 
and you put the flower underneath so then then capture it on the left and on the right hand side I could work live and I could pull away the petals and talk about the anther and the pollen and everything else that goes up to make the flower and pull those bits and they can actually see me working live but all the time we can refer back refer to what we started back to yeah that's it we can refer back there. to what we started with now all of the things that we've we've done here all the images that we've captured can you use them or can the students use them after this is sort of we've packed up and gone home yes yeah, so if i've captured that using the laptop then those can be converted in format and posted up on a virtual learning environment or a school website or a portal and made accessible to your students so they can go and download those whenever they wish to onto their ipod onto their pc onto their phones so it becomes all time anywhere learning effectively um, and they can, you know, on the build-up to revision for exams, they can just download that material and, and review it whenever they wish to. But also for me as a teacher, I can store things away. That's useful for me too, for teaching and learning. So if I need an example of something that I've done on here, I can bring it back as a video and replay it back to my, my students. Or so if I'm away from a lesson, mm. they can use that as well. So it, it's, it's, it's good for you? Yes. It's good for the planning of lessons and like you say exactly, keeping a, yes. a sort of a history yes. of what you've done yeah. throughout your lessons but yeah. also great for students who maybe are happier learning at their own speed and, and don't always take things on a one hit that's right they, they can review it as many times as they wish to so as soon as I've recorded it I can play it back in the lesson if I wish to so having just watched me demonstrate something they can we can then play that back to those students who need to just see that again you know, at that point in the lesson, they might just have arrived late or they might not have caught everything that I said. I can put it back on a loop and replay that and then they can watch it during the lesson.